Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. Hopefully you are gonna enjoy this complete growing guide because we're gonna be doing a bunch of complete growing guides on fruit trees. Now we are going to be doing this kind of in succession with the fruit trees, fruit trees that we've planted. So we will be doing a lot of them. And one thing that I wanna start off by saying is that they will, a lot of them will have very similar information. So you probably will, um, if you watch more than one, You'll probably start thinking to yourself, hey, I've heard this information before. The reason why is because it is like all of our growing guides name specific. So cherry trees, peach trees, apple trees, you're gonna see all those, um, but it's because not everybody searches for uh, you know, that same thing. So uh, we're, we're gonna be making one on cherries today. We're gonna be having one on apples, one on peaches, one on uh, pears. So there will be slight differences between them but very slight, making you have to pay attention to catch those little tidbits of different information. But for the most part, they will be the same. So I'm just only preparing you guys, because I know that'll come up as well. But um, with, that being out, with that being said and out of the way, uh, I wanna talk about cherry trees now. Cherry trees are super, super rewarding. They are definitely something that I think everyone enjoys growing because there's so many uses for cherries. And one of the things that, uh, that I enjoy using uh, cherries for is since I can't have them raw, I will bake them, I'll turn them into preserves, but they yield a ton. One tree is enough for one, uh, a whole family. Um, they, they will produce anywhere from 150 to 300 pounds of cherries when they're fully mature. So I'm never gonna let these get fully mature because it's like a home setting, but they do have the potential to grow that many uh, fruit. So it's, it's incredible how much they yield and the reason why is because the fruit size is very small, so it does not take a lot of energy to produce a cherry, whereas it takes a ton of energy to produce apples, which is typically why you see lesser yields on, on your, your homegrown apple trees than you, do, uh, than you do like your cherry trees, because the amount of energy that it takes to, to put out an apple is significantly more than it takes to put out a cherry. That's why I love them as well. Um, and also the fact that uh, they don't need crosses. One of the things that people always ask is, uh, you know, what kind of trees do I need to, to cross pollinate to increase production? When you get your cherry trees, they will say that you need a, a cross to increase production. This is true, however, it's not like an apple tree is or a pear tree. Um, when you're talking about cherry trees, there are very, very, very few trees that you need to create a cross because there are so many wild native trees growing around like choke cherries and, uh, and wild cherry trees that will cro readily cross pollinate with this cultivated variety. So it's a very common misconception that you need more than one cherry tree. And to be honest, it's typically more of a, a selling feature. So don't get sold on that. You only need one tree, I promise. Um, and they're gonna do great. So uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the soil structure. It is so crucial to growing successfully your cherry trees that you have very, very deep, loose soil. Here in our soil, it's quite clay. You can, you can, imagine, uh, you can imagine just kind of making pottery with it when it's wet. Um, it's, it's quite clay. Um, in certain areas, the soil is better, but in this specific area, it was quite clay. So what we had to do is when we dug a hole, we dug it about two and a half times larger than the root ball and we put in lots of compost. And that prepped the soil, loosened the soil, because it's extremely important to have all of your fruit trees, not just cherry trees, but cherry trees specifically, um, you know, since we're talking about them in this growing guide, to have very loose soil. Their roots need to move out quickly because of the fact that they have to survive winter. They have to be able to move past and move deeply past that frost line, past that, that freezing layer where they can still stay warm and have their sugars go down deep in their root system so that they can pull that up in the springtime. So that's one of the big reasons why cherry trees uh, will die off is that they're not planted adequately. So that's a big component. The next thing is soil pH. When you're talking about soil pH, they like a little bit acidic. Oftentimes when you plant in clay soil, it's slightly alkaline. So what we've done is we just went to our local hardware store, picked up some soil acidifier. We sprinkled that in the hole to bring our pH down to right around six. So six is very slightly acidic. Seven is uh, basically pH neutral, so slightly acidic. Um, and that's just gonna make sure they can uptake those nutrients. Uh, cherry trees and all, actually all plants, they use soil pH to uptake nutrients. So if you're, uh, one way to tell that you need to um, lower your pH is if they start struggling with, with nutrient deficiencies, but you're fertilizing readily, which we'll talk about. So um, just make sure that if you know you fertilized, 
then there's probably a pH deficiency or a pH um, you know, imbalance in your soil that you need to fix. Um, so the next thing that I did want to talk about was fertilizing. Now this is the most important part once you've prepped the soil um, and dug your hole about two and a half times uh, as wide as the root ball, planted the plant, uh, backfilled with good soil, all that kind of stuff can be found on past videos. Now it comes to fertilizing. When you, want, when you fertilize, you want to fertilize early in the spring, when they set flowers, and in the fall. So cherry trees are one of the only trees you want to fertilize three times. So the reason why is because cherry trees, they don't act, they will set all of their fruit at once. All of their blossoms come out at once. And uh, typically what will happen is they will have a massive flush of growth after they flower. So it's not the flowering we're concerned about, it's that they put on small buds that grow that requires energy. You kind of want to you want to fertilize it to kind of boost it out of dormancy. That's the first time. So we've gone and fertilized uh, right away uh, after the plant has been planted. Fertilize with just a very gentle, very very gentle nitrogen fertilizer. Because as we talk about, when you first plant your trees, you don't want them to uh, to be fertilized very heavily. So what we've done is we've just gone and fertilized them with a 200, very very light nitrogen fertilizer. Pretty much like worm castings are a great great fertilizer to just kind of take them out of dormancy. Um, and then what you want to do is then once they start to blossom, that is when you want to prep for that, that initial growth of, um, you know, of, of more uh, actual leaves. Because the flowers, they come naturally and they will come in a big flush. But that big flush, after they flower, you'll notice that there is actually leaf buds that form right after that flowering period. And so you can't just assume that the plant's gonna have the nutrients available to put out all that new growth. So what you wanna do is come back right when the flowers start forming and put a good uh, 200 on again. Just kind of reapply with some more worm castings, worm tea, compost tea, something very gentle, very light, but it's gonna provide the nutrients that are gonna get the plant going. And then when the plant gets to fall time, so this is way later around like October-ish, you wanna come back and fertilize now with a high phosphorus fertilizer. High phosphorus fertilizer is going to ensure that the plant, you don't need a lot of nitrogen. So um, we actually use trifecta actually, uh, because we, this is only when we first plant the plant. So this is the first year, the very first year when, we, when you plant the plant, you wanna fertilize with the, the 200, the 200, and then we fertilize with trifecta, which is going to have your high, your high phosphorus count that's going to get the roots going, ready for dormancy, get the plant ready to shut down for the winter. And then next year, now this is year two, then you can apply trifecta or your, your favorite fertilizer of choice to the root system, make sure it's got good nitrogen in it, and it's going to make sure that the plant comes out of dormancy. So it's only the first year that you have to go gentle because we want to encourage the root growth out because again, they're perennial, so they need that root growth. And if you fertilize them heavily right at the base with a really high nitrogen, high phosphorus, high potassium fertilizer, they're not encouraged to move out. Now the next thing is sunlight. All your cherry trees, every single variety, doesn't matter if they're dwarf or a, a full size, these are a semi-dwarf because they're made for yards, you can get those. Um, they require six plus hours of sun, full sun. They need as strong as you can give it. So what we typically uh, recommend is eight hours. Eight hours will ensure that you got enough sun. These will get about 10 to 12 hours of sun, which is even better. So make sure at least eight hours. I find six hours really pushing it for production. If you wanna get adequate uh, pr fruit production, it is quite cold out today. So um, my lips are not working as fast. Um, but yeah, so make sure you get at least eight hours. The tag will say six. Don't listen to it. Um, they definitely need more than that. And the very last thing that you wanna make sure that you do is watering. Now watering is very, very crucial to fruit production. Uh, what you wanna do is when the plant is obviously, this is year one, you wanna water it about a gallon a day for the first three weeks. First three weeks, a gallon a day. It seems excessive, but you need to make sure that it does not go through any stress. And then what happens is after those three weeks, you can take it back to a gallon every other day for two weeks. And then after that, then you can simply make sure it gets a gallon a week. And that just makes sure that the plant does not go through any stress so that it can set fruit, set leaves, grow very well for you. And then uh, the plant is going to be off to the races and it's going to do well. 
So last thing I want to talk about was the cold hardiness zone. A lot, oftentimes we get asked this, so I'm definitely gonna put this in all of our growing guides for our fruit trees, is what zone they can tolerate. So cherry trees can tolerate up to zone three and no lower than zone eight because cherry trees need something called chill hours. Chill hours are basically how many hours below freezing. So cherry trees generally need about 300 chill hours in order to put out fruit again. This is the most, this is in most cases, um, cherry trees, some will require 200 and at least 150. So you at least need some type of winter weather conditions. And that's why zone eight, you can guarantee you're gonna have at least 150. Um, and you can definitely find a more warm tolerant cherry uh, cherry variety for those uh, for those lower kind of uh, you know lower chill hour times you might not get 300 but you might get 150 definitely look into that there are certainly some out there but most most cherry trees that grow up until zone three will have about 300 chill hours so um, that just ensures that the, there's a good reset period so the tree can go dormant send its sugars down tell it that there was a season change so it will produce fruit again. You can grow cherry trees in California, you know, Southern California. Just don't count on them. Just don't count on them producing much fruit for you, if any, because the plant will just continue growing and turning green, but it won't ever notice there's a season change, which is very important to signal the next flowering cycle. So that's about, that's about it, to be honest, with cherry trees. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke reminding you to grow big or go home. See ya. Bye.